Good morning, I'm Charles and welcome to today's vlog. Today is day number 14 of uh, the 30 day challenge to do post 30 vlogs in 30 days. Uh, I must uh, admit I've taken um, a couple of days out over the last few days. Um, as I mentioned in the last one, I've been restructuring to try and actually bring you some something that was a little bit more meaningful. Um, and from my perspective, I was finding that um, putting the vlogs together was becoming a little bit too much um, of an effort. And I realized the reason it's becoming too much of an effort is because I was actually starting to get bored by it. Um, it wasn't really uh, meaningful, it wasn't structured, it was simply trying to work out what my daily blurt could be. So um, from today going forwards, um, it's gonna be a lot more structured. Today it's gonna be more about introducing what I'm gonna be doing going forwards but I'm also going to um, give a little bit more context to actually what I do. So what am I about? I'm about solving problems. I find genius solutions to help businesses and individuals to achieve their dreams. Now, what does that mean? Um, in terms of businesses, um, it's about looking at problems that people have and coming up with solutions that really help them to actually achieve what their underlying problem is. With individuals, um, those solutions are based more about helping them to fulfill something that is a dream of theirs, to achieve something that they otherwise considered to be impossible. So let me start by telling you about um, two, uh, two stories. The first one is going to be a business story. Um, this is actually true. Um, so I sat down with a prospective client and um, the meeting began by them introducing themselves. Well, I had met them before, but they were introducing the team and each in turn would basically begin by saying, hello, my name is Dr. X and I'm a rocket scientist. Now, some years ago, I would have sat there and thought, whoa, I'm out of my depth. How am I gonna get out of this meeting? But then we started talking about um, business and they were telling, they ultimately came to me and said, my problem is, or our problem is, that we are looking for financing. We're looking for 90 million euros worth of financing. Can you help us to find that? Can you make the introductions to us? So the simple solution would have been to say, okay, let's go about finding how we can um, present your business model, how we can um, start to target some potential investors, and how we can make it attractive for them. Rather than taking that direct approach, I said I stepped back one level and said, became and um, I started to find out more about the business. I wanted to know what they did, what their model was, what they're trying to achieve, um, and ultimately what their true problems were. And I discovered fairly quickly, in fact, within the space of about 20 minutes of speaking to these rocket scientists, that what they were looking, what they considered to be their problem, i.e. they needed 90 million euros worth of financing, was not actually their problem. Their problem was that they were launching a satellite into the inner orbit, still way beyond my area of familiarity, um, and uh, that would take three years in the run-up, and then as of launch, um, it would effectively move to a different uh, to a different phase. So prior to launch, it would be about um, effectively paying for the satellite to get up there, building relationships so that when it did go online in three years time, they could simply start servicing their clients. Um, so the um, solution that I came up with for this um, was to say, why do you need to go about raising the capital when ideally you can get your clients to pay you the money up front. Now, they weren't able to secure a single penny in payment from their clients um, because they were positioning it wrongly. Their clients were saying, yes, I love what you're doing, and as of three years' time, when it goes live, I will definitely be a supporter and I would like to, to buy into this. And they would sign a contract, so the clients were comfortable that the money was, was available going forwards. And in, in itself, that would have helped them to raise, to raise capital. But I stepped back, at, um, uh, I took one step back and I said to them, actually, why don't you find out a means of getting the clients to want to pay you money now? The solution that I came up with for this space tech company was to go to its clients, who are ultimately universities, and to um, say to them, 
why don't you pay me the money up front? And in doing so, it is in your interest. Because what they were able to do was to actually start selling the, their course placements to their students, i.e. our client's client, um, so that they could, um, those students could come to their university because they were getting that data. It was going to give their potential client, their clients, um, a fantastic reason to say, yes, I'm going to now invest the next two years of my life because you have access to some crazy impossible data that no one else can get. And by um, following this through with all of their clients, actually, they succeeded in getting the money up front. So they didn't need to raise capital. They certainly didn't need to raise as much. And they probably saved themselves 10 to 15 million euros in the process. So that is a fantastic solution that I came up with for them. But ultimately, where the solution came from was that I looked more closely at their problem and didn't consider their problem to be simply the problem that they had come up with. So that's, um, that's a business example of some of, uh, some of the things that I do and the approach that I come to, um, to looking for solutions. Taking a client problem that I would work with on an individual basis or a personal basis, um, imagine another scenario. Imagine that you love sports cars. You've always had a dream to have a particular sports car and perhaps there were only seven ever made. Seven sports cars ever made and maybe this was 50 years ago. So perhaps two of those have been written off, two of those have been crashed and are no longer in circulation. Maybe another two of them are currently in museums and those are, those are out of circulation. So that leaves three in play. Now that sounds like a pretty impossible task. That sounds like my kind of task. It's a challenge. So I would, um, my clients ultimately, it doesn't really, matter to their business and it wouldn't matter to them daily whether they achieve that or not. It is something that was a dream and actually it was considered to be a dream and they kind of parked in the back of their head as something they would love to do but realistically it's, it's never going to happen, it's not achievable. Um, so I look at things in a different way. I say, right, let's go about this. Let's go step by step by step and look at all of the obstacles that are in front of, um, in front of or between my client and his dream. And when you start working your way through step by step, you know, you go through sourcing, you go through evaluating, you go through making a bid or in this case, it would be a direct offer to the, um, to the other owner. You would look at the financing, you'd look at the insurance, you'd look at the shipping, the storage, um, showing it perhaps at a, um, at a museum or an exhibition or something like that, and even participating in races. Uh, trust me, these cars would be worth tens of millions of pounds, so you probably wouldn't want to do that. But still, you're helping somebody to fulfill a dream of theirs, a dream that is otherwise considered to be impossible. And I think that this is a very important thing that people overlook. People overlook the fact that dreams are not meant to be dreams. Dreams are meant to be real. And I go that extra step. I know those people, I know the people, I can find the people, I know the processes and procedures to get to the result. And that is fantastic. That is whether it's in the private wealth world where um, banks generally focus just on making your money grow, but or it's just on an individual world where whatever you want to achieve, you want to move forward, that is what I love fulfilling for my clients. So generally what happens is my clients come to me with the symptoms of their problems. I work with them to actually find the root problem and then from there I find a solution that is much, much more focused. So I don't just find a solution that works, I find a solution that actually works and does what they need it to achieve. I look at their end result. I don't look at what they think their problem is and the obvious solution. The obvious solution will give you obvious results. Look forward, look to the future. So my message here is find the root problem rather than the symptom. So over the next couple of days, um, I am basically going to um, break down the, um, the 
the steps and the types of problem that you might recognize. So for businesses, um, what I'm going to be going through over the next, uh, over the next six days will be um, finding the root of the problem. So generally the problem within most businesses is that the symptom is you're not growing, you're not making enough money. However, let's look a little bit more deeply about the type of problem that, that there will be. So the six problems that I will be going, or the problem types that I will be working on in the coming six days are, one is there is no plan. Number two is your product offering. Number three is about the service that you offer them. Number four is clients. The number five problem, which actually is one of the key problems, is you. And number six is thinking forwards and thinking big. So I hope that uh, that was uh, useful to you and I hope that um, it's gonna be interesting to you going forward. So please make sure that you tune in, in particular for the next six days. So the next six days, um, as I've been through already, are gonna be focusing on identifying what the true problems are. After that, I'm gonna move on to approaches that you can uh, make uh, towards, uh, towards reaching solutions. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, please do continue to tune on. Now, moving on to the art side of things. Behind me, I have one of my favorite paintings, and this is, um, it's a shoal of fish, and um, it's a very, very beautiful piece which I've been looking at for ages. I mean, the intensity in it of the, of the sphere building is, um, is really quite fantastic. This is um, a painting by uh, an artist called Nikki Beeling or Nicola Beeling, and it's called um, uh, Ice Shoal. And um, when you zoom right into it, you'll see that there are literally thousands and thousands of fish here. Um, I've told my children sometimes when um, I need them to be distracted that maybe they should be counting the fish, but uh, they have no chance of counting them all. But the connection between this and, um, and today's vlog is that here there are many, many fish. They all have their own identity. They are each and every one individual. Every single person that is listening to this vlog is individual and perhaps this is the world, this is the world population. We are in there and we are individual, we are waiting to be found, we're waiting to be see, uh, seen. We each have our individual problems and we each want our solutions. Finding it, finding the problem right in among everything is the key. Thanks for watching.